I got interested in the biochemistry of kissing after talking about the animal behavior field in general with one of my students who realized that this would be uh, an unusual behavior to look at uh, with regards to um, the proximate and ultimate explanations of behavior. We studied uh, two hormones in particular, oxytocin, which is a neuropeptide and is involved in pair bonding. The second hormone was cortisol, which is a stress hormone. And we thought both of those would be related to kissing because of the importance of pair bonding to kissing. Pair bonding is an example of attachment. There's lots of, kind, there's lots of different kinds of pair bonding. There's mother-infant pair bonding and there's pair bonding between partners. So it's a form of social attachment. We found with cortisol and kissing that the levels decline, but they also decline for couples that hold hands. So we didn't see that kissing was different from just physical contact of holding hands. We also found that for couples, we were studying couples in long-term relations, and the longer the relationship, the greater the decline in cortisol. Our test participants uh, were volunteers, so they uh, were interested in participating. Um, they were um, college students, and uh, they were in long-term relationships uh, as long, on average, as about 560 days. Um, they seemed to uh, enjoyed the setting. Um, they enjoyed participating. I think some of them were disappointed when they were put in the control group and they weren't um, allowed to kiss. They held hands or talked. Um, so it, it certainly was um, interesting to see their reaction from that. One interesting anecdote was when one couple asked what group they were put in and were told that they were going to be in the kissing group the female responded, oh thank God because I didn't have anything to talk to him about if we were put in the other group. One of the things we're interested in doing to follow up on this study was to look at the changes in oxytocin in females who were on birth control pills versus those who were not. We found that the females on birth control pills had higher levels of oxytocin. Given that oxytocin plays a role in pair bonding, this might have implications for their behavior. So we want to look at females who um, haven't gone on birth control pills yet measure their oxytocin levels and then look at them after they've gone on the birth control pills to see if we can see the change in time. I think these studies give us insights into the physiological mechanisms of human intimacy as well as their evolutionary perspectives. Possibly these studies can have implications for uh, marital therapy in helping uh, couples stay together longer, uh, but that's certainly down the road after we get some of the basic science questions answered.